So there were certain animals which had no sensation, and out of them grew intelligent animals, and were called Zaphisemin, that is, observers of heaven, and they were formed like the shape of an egg. Also Mo burst forth into light, and sun, and moon, and stars, and the great constellations. Such was their cosmogony, introducing downright atheism. But let us see next how he states the generation of animals to have arisen. He says then, And when the air burst into light, both the sea and the land became heated, and thence arose winds and clouds, and very great downpours and floods of the waters of heaven. So after they were separated, and removed from their proper place because of the sun's heat, and all met together again in the air dashing together one against another, thunderings and lightnings were produced, and at the rattle of the thunder the intelligent animals already described woke up, and were scared at the sound, and began to move both on land and sea, male and female. Such is their theory of the generation of animals. Next after this the same writer adds and says, These things were found written in the cosmogony of Tautus, and in his commentaries, both from conjectures, and from evidence which his intellect discerned, and discovered, and made clear to us. Next to this, after mentioning the names of the winds Notos and Boris and the rest, he continues. But these were the first who consecrated the productions of the earth, and regarded them as gods, and worshipped them as being the support of life both to themselves, and to those who were to come after them, and to all before them, and they offered to them drink offerings and libations. He adds also, These were their notions of worship, corresponding to their own weakness and timidity of soul. Then he says that from the wind Kalpias and his wife Bo, which he translates, Night, were born Aeon and Protagonus, mortal men, so called, and that Aeon discovered the food obtained from trees, that their offspring were called Genos and Genia, and inhabited Phoenicia, and that when droughts occurred, they stretched out their hands to heaven towards the sun. For him alone, he says, they regarded as God the Lord of heaven, calling him Bielsamin, which is in the Phoenician language, Lord of heaven, and in Greek, Zeus. And after this he charges the Greeks with error, saying, For it is not without cause that we have explained these things in many ways, but in view of the later misinterpretations of the names in the history, which the Greeks in ignorance took in a wrong sense, being deceived by the ambiguity of the translation. Afterwards he says, From Genos, son of Aeon and Protagonus, were begotten again mortal children, whose names are light, and fire, and flame. These, says he, discovered fire from rubbing pieces of wood together, and taught the use of it. And they begot sons of surpassing size and stature, whose names were applied to the mountains which they occupied, so that from them were named Mount Cassius, and Libanus, and Antilibanus, and Brathi. From these, he says, were begotten Memramus and Hypsiranius, and they got their names, he says, from their mothers, as the women in those days had free intercourse with any whom they met. Then he says, Hypsiranius inhabited Tyre, and contrived huts out of reeds and rushes and papyrus, and he quarreled with his brother Assus, who first invented a covering for the body from skins of wild beasts, which he was strong enough to capture. And when furious rains and winds occurred, the trees in Tyre were rubbed against each other and caught fire, and burned down the wood that was there. And Ussus took a tree, and having stripped off the branches, was the first who ventured to embark on the sea, and consecrated two pillars to fire and wind, and worshipped them, and poured libations of blood upon them from the wild beasts which he took in hunting. But when Hypsiranius and Ussus were dead, those who were left, he says, consecrated staves to them, and year by year worshipped their pillars and kept festivals in their honor. But many years afterwards from the race of Lipsiranius were born Agrius and Halliers, the inventors of hunting and fishing, from whom were named huntsmen and fishermen, and from them were born two brethren, discoverers of iron and the mode of working it, the one of whom, Chrysor, practiced oratory, and incantations, and divinations, and that he was Hephaestus, and invented the hook, and bait, and line, and raft, and was the first of all men to make a voyage, wherefore they reverenced him also, as a god after his death. And he was also called Zeus Milikios. And some say that his brothers invented walls of brick. <laughs>